So I have the real pleasure here of being with Sarah Hornsby. Um, I've known Sarah for a couple of years, I guess. I mean, we really got chatting at my father's 90th um, anniversary con conference. It's a symposium, yeah. the International Association of Facial Growth Guidance. And I did a couple of interviews and we found the videos and we then realized it was this um, Mouth Breathing Awareness Month. Yeah, my, I created, so last year I started doing this mouth breathing awareness campaign mm. in the month of May. And so I thought, well, I started the tradition last year. I've got to do it again this year. So yeah, mouth breathing awareness. What was your first contact with my functional therapy? Uh, I started learning about it around 2010 because I was looking for continuing education to keep up my dental hygiene license. And it's kind of funny because it was so small back then, nobody, I had never heard of it and I kind of accidentally stumbled upon it and then uh, decided to get the training and realized in the midst of the training that I had a lot of these symptoms that they were talking about. And I was, to be honest, I was horrified. I was like, how did I get this far in my dental hygiene career? I started reflecting back on my childhood and thinking, how did my, you know, dentists and orthodontists never even mention these things? And so, you know, I started connecting a lot of these dots and, and I was really disappointed and um, just thought, well, if I have this and I'm a hygienist and I'm in the dental profession, then there's got to be a lot of other people who are probably dealing with the same things, but might not have access to the information. And I kind of started a journey from there of realizing that no one in the dental field is really talking about these things. And so the more I started looking, the more I realized that it's just so uncommon, at least especially back then before we really had any research um, I think today it's changed quite a bit because we actually do have legitimate research connecting mouth breathing to sleep apnea and tongue tie and mouth breathing and sleep apnea and all of these bigger things um, are all starting to be, to get connected. Yeah. But I think in a way the research in sleep apnea has lent us the scientific research. Oh, for sure. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be where we are. So no, it's, no. it's the sleep apnea connection and, and I always say it sounds like such a big statement, but the kids who are mouth breathing are the adults we see with sleep apnea. They're, they're one and the same. So it's just a continuum of these mouth breathing symptoms over decades. Now you are an adult with, with much bigger issues. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it, 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 having an awareness week to raise awareness of this is important. Yeah, and I look at the, the mouth breathing. It's kind of like the canary in the coal mine, you know, it's... Yeah it's a symptom that any parent can recognize. And, and if you really tune into yourself, you can start to recognize it in yourself. And if you have it, it's such a red flag symptom for bigger problems. So I, I wanted to do mouth breathing instead of, you know, tongue thrust, or I don't know, there's so many other things you could do, but I think breathing is easy for anyone to, um, to self analyze or it's for a parent to analyze their kids and, and recognize. So I mean, you know, the, the art of Awareness Week is to find an element that gains people's attention. Yeah. Yeah. So this year, what I've done, um, because it's the entire month of May, so I have this amazing group of professionals, dentists and dental hygienists that have gone through my training program called Myo Mentor. And I get to hear all of their stories and they're all so passionate and they're so enthusiastic um, they get into this work because usually it's their child or themselves or a significant other that has these symptoms. And mm. so they kind of get to this crossroads where they have a personal connection and it starts spilling over into their professional dental practice. And they start to think, wow, this is, uh, why don't I know about this? And then they start to pursue it. And it's, it's that journey that makes them so passionate and so, um, just, I feel that, that the people that get into this field just have such an enthusiasm for it. And I think it's because of that personal connection. So I wanted mm -hmm. to share these stories and, and that's what I've done. So today's May 25th, I've interviewed 24 people, um, to share their stories. And, and that's what I've done on my YouTube channel recently. So just trying to get those stories out there so that patients can connect. So have you in a way created a community of my functional therapists. Yourself. I do. Yeah. I have a community of about 300 
uh, dentists and hygienists who've gone through my course and they're all on the same page, they're all like-minded. Um, we're all kind of about collaboration versus, oh, you're my competition. Um, mm -hmm. To me, I think the more I share this information, the more you share this information, the more they share it, the more the field grows, the more that helps all of us. That means more people get treatment versus mm -hmm. if we think, oh, this is my secret. I don't want to give away my secrets. This is my profession. I want to make all the money and have all the patients. It's That's so short-sighted. So I think I've done a really great job of, of cultivating that type of vibe around myofunctional therapy. At least that's my hope. So how do you think, how do you think this um, uh, mouth breathing awareness month has gone? I think it's done really well. I think um, at least within my small circle, it's getting a lot of attention. Um, I think it's really, it gives people the opportunity to say, uh, to their patients, the hygienists and dentists, check out this interview I did. And, you know, I have a lot of the same things that you're dealing with. And if you want to hear my story, here's, here's a way to, you know, to learn more. And then that can lead them even to other videos on my channel or to videos on your channel. And honestly, I think we have to use social media and technology as the way to connect with patients because yeah. you can hand someone a brochure, but where do they spend their time? It's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And I think we have to realize that as, as dental professionals, you know? Well, I think that um, social media has given us an mm. ability to connect with patients and get information sure. to patients that simply didn't exist previously. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, 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 the control lines, the communications was always quite well controlled by or well, is all you know medicine's always going to be conservative yeah. was being conservative and new yeah. ideas are always resisted no but now any idea can get out there and kind of you know spread as much as it it, it can i mean that's how yeah. i think your channel has grown so much it's just an idea that that re, that resonates with people and so they want to learn more read more you know they they start you know delving and searching through the internet for more information, whether or not their dentist knows about it, um, they want to find it, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Now, tell me, what, you know, you, you discussed really what, um, you know, what, what appealed to you about my functional therapy. You know, mm -hmm. what, what would you say to someone who is considering getting in to my functional therapy? You know, taking one of your programs or taking someone else's program? Yeah, I think it's important to realize that this isn't, some mysterious, complicated treatment. I think it's very simple and it's really just restoring normal function. So I have this video called the four goals of myofunctional therapy and it's, it's so simple. I mean, breathe through your nose, put your tongue up, have your lips together and swallow without your tongue thrusting forward basically. And those are things that we should do every day of our life since the day we're born. And so I think getting into this, don't think of it as like, oh, it's this mysterious, complicated, complex thing. All we're doing is guiding people to normal function where they should be uh, from the day they're born and, and they should remain that way their whole life. And, um, you know, everything that we're doing pairs perfectly with orthodontic treatment, sleep apnea treatment, TMD treatment, um, physical therapy. I mean, it's, it's a critical component to just living life as a normal functioning healthy human you know and and so I don't think it should be looked at as um something that's so complicated you know you you've clearly treated a lot of people do you do you, do you mix online teaching where do you have a clinic yourself at the moment where you actually I, physically I, patients to make? yeah I actually don't today um for the first four years I practiced um from 2010 to about the end of 2014 I saw all of my patients completely in person in my practice in Seattle. And, um, you know, around that time, I was starting to have a lot of people reaching out to me. I had a couple YouTube videos and I had some good information on my website. I had some blog posts and I started having patients reaching out to me from all over the world, really across the U.S., just because there, there wasn't the number of myofunctional therapists out there. And so I, I started to think maybe I should actually try to work with these people rather than turning them away. I'm turning away business. And so um, it started in like mid-2015, I decided that maybe I should just do this fully online, which back then was very controversial. And literally until this COVID situation, I think 
that was always something that people would criticize yeah. a bit. So I actually closed down my physical office and I do this fully online now. Uh, and, you know, through 2016 through 2018, I ended up hiring three other therapists and building this really amazing online practice. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I was seeing so many patients and managing so many cases that I actually burnt out a little bit. And so I kind of had this goal for 2019. I remember saying in January 2019, I need to raise my prices. I need to funnel the majority of my patients to these other therapists who have trained up and they're really amazing. I need to get some of my time back. And I'm now having so many people reaching out to me about training and how did you do this? You built this amazing thing. I want to learn from you. And so I wanted to spend more of my time actually lecturing with, you know, the Breed Institute or Myo Munchie or Myo Focus. And so I still take on one or two cases a month, but I'm much more selective with, with who I see. And I really take on people who, um, you know, are super dedicated and, and enthusiastic. I, I don't want to have to convince anyone anymore of anything that what I do is legitimate, you know? So, so could, could you remember your worst patient? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, the patients that are the worst, I, I think it's not like they're bad patients. It's they don't value. <laughs> they, they've been told by their orthodontist that you need to work with Sarah and they don't fully connect with why, or, um, you know, so they're mostly just saying, Oh, I'll pay you the money. You just have to kind of wave your wand and fix me. And so they don't connect with the problems. And so because of that, they don't practice the exercises. They don't really do what they need to do. It's just not a priority to them. And so they don't get success. So I think that's what the bad patients are. But, um, you know, it's not their fault. They just don't understand. And, you know, I just I can only do so much to, to educate and to help people want to change. But everything is i mean in this field it's all it has to come from that internal motivation yeah well i think this is the the big difference between the, the a a system where you make someone's teeth straight an ideology where you make someone's mm -hmm. teeth an ideology where you make your own teeth straight yeah yeah and and um, in my case restore you know better health better function um not everyone who reaches out to me is working with an orthodontist. So sometimes that's even something that I feel the need to guide them towards because anyone who has these, these oral facial myofunctional issues also is going to have a narrow palate, crooked teeth, and probably orthodontic relapse. And so to have that whole picture complete, I often will try to find the right orthodontist to, to pair them up with. What, what, what did you think? Do you see a sea change from the... Um, community from from more patients or a, a general change in a, a public opinion about my functional therapy yeah i do um i i know that back when i got into this field um i did spend a lot of time like i said earlier convincing people mm. and this was convincing yeah. patients convincing dentists and it got exhausting, <laughs> you know, it's so like when all you're doing is trying to like, just prove that what you do is, is a real thing. Um, that's, that's hard. So now I find uh, a huge change. I would say starting in around 2015, uh, patients reaching out to me uh, and dentists reaching out to me versus me having to go hunt them down, you know? So I think now the information is there. We no longer in the field have to fight to prove that it's a thing. I, I feel like that is becoming more just accepted. Like, okay, this is a real thing. It is, it does matter. And now I think the challenge is how to make it more mainstream and how to really integrate it into dentistry. Yeah. yeah. So. And tell me, Sarah, what, 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 age group do you would you prefer if you what's your dream age group you know that if you could just select yeah. any age group of patients what would it be well i i mean i didn't intend for this to happen but i mostly work with adults and i mostly see the complex cases where people are in severe chronic pain like tmd headaches head neck shoulder issues um, they have some degree of sleep disordered breathing, whether that's full blown obstructive sleep apnea somewhere, you know, maybe they just have snoring or upper airway resistance syndrome. Um, they are usually in that category of, of both. And so 
Uh, and a lot of times they need orthodontic treatment, tongue tie. And so I've kind of become the expert at managing these complex cases. And, and my real passion is being able to connect these patients with all of the right providers that they need to see, because I can't, I can't help them with just exercises. You know, um, I can do a lot. And what I do is a critical piece to that puzzle, but I need to help them build a team. And so I think that's kind of become my specialty. Um, you know, working with the kids is the best time to, to fix these things and to see the changes. Um, but I think I just, in my situation, probably like in your situation, you end up getting kind of the craziest, worst of the worst cases, you know, because they've tried everything else. They've done everything else. And they're like, Sarah, can you help me? Or Mike, can you help me? And so those are the I, ones I end up doing now. Yeah. I've, I've actually had to make a very big effort to wean myself away to, um, because otherwise you, you, you're, you, you're emotionally drained and you, oh, you're yeah. struggling to, to make headway to learn how to get better yeah. at prevention if you're all yeah. dealing with the other end. I know. So I think there's a lot of people, like all the therapists that have gone through my program, they all want to work with kids and they need some of the more simple cases. So I'm happy to kind of pass those on to them. And, and I don't mind taking on the complex one, although it, it is, that's why I only do one or two a month <laughs> because it is, it's a lot of work, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and yes. so I, I don't mind filling that void. I just can't do it like all day, every day. You know, I have to be more selective with my, my energy and my time. <laughs> now, so going slightly sideways here, Sarah. So yeah, that's okay. <laughs> when, if you, you're going out, so you're, you're at a party, what do you tell people you do? Well, uh, I, I kind of avoid it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I say, well, what, what is people's reactions when you tell them but yeah, you know, about what you do? I, I think most people relate to snoring and sleep apnea. So I'll tend to, I'll tend to gear it towards that way. So if people say, oh, so what do you do? I, I'll usually just say, oh, I do this kind of niche therapy where I help people with sleep apnea and snoring. That's like a really basic <laughs> thing that I'll say. Okay. I'm like, oh, really? Tell me more. What is it? And I'm like, well... Have you ever heard of physical therapy? Obviously, most people have, or speech therapy. I say, well, it's kind of like a hybrid between those two things. So basically, I teach people exercises, and I do it all online. And then they're like, wow, that's really that's really weird. And, and so usually, it starts this whole cascade where um, people yeah. start saying, well, do I have it? And do you, you know, do you think I need this? And I breathe through my mouth, and my husband has that. And so it can be this whole, like, <laughs> you know, it, it, I try not to say too much because it will get, to the point where I'm like analyzing everyone in the party, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, a long time ago, I realized you could keep your lips closed. In in, in, what would happen too often the entire night yeah. would become a discussion about faces. Oh my gosh, yeah. And it was just, um, I, then I learned to just zip yeah. it. Yes, I'm an orthodontist. Well, exactly. You know what or, I do. Or I say, and, oh, I work online. I'll do, I'll say that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay. yours is yours is interesting too because uh, this is where I've kind of chosen a different path. Is you focus much more on the cosmetic side of things, which is completely well. Relevant. Yeah, I'm trying to focus on the health side of it, but clearly so, the people, a lot of people following me are focusing on the cosmetic side of it. Yeah, but and it's often a that's thing. a good measure of change. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. I don't, what I do in my clinic isn't really reflected by the sort of phenomenon of mewing that I see around me <laughs> and that I, yeah. I want to help. Yeah, yeah. And so that's something, you know, I do recognize, but I feel like, um, you know, when I'm working with, with people, if they haven't acknowledged some of the physical things going on with their face, like I, I actually don't even point it out. I, I really try to focus it on health and function and all, you know, breathing better, sleeping better, all that kind of thing. Um, but the cosmetic thing, it's, it's very there. I mean, it's, it's obvious it's apparent it's, and if people want to talk about it, I do, but, um, yeah, it's just funny how you can, I, I think the cosmetic actually brings people to the health. So it's, I think it's good yes, what you're doing yeah, and, and what's yeah, involved. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I am using the cosmetic side of it blatantly to get exactly. people to improve their health. Yeah. Great. Yeah. You know, why not? You know? Yeah, we all care about appearance and how we look. And so if that's what's going to get people, you know, 
I'm trying to create awareness around mouth breathing, but you know, maybe if I just talked about chins and jaw lines and stuff like that, then those are the things that, that draw people in to realize that there's more. So I, 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 I don't mind that message. Um, I, I actually think it's helpful in, in getting the awareness. So I'm glad you're doing it. I, I'm so passionate about this, yeah. as I know you are. And, yeah. you know, and it, that brings me on to the next because topic is, you know, how are we going to get more change? I think, I mean, keeping doing this kind of stuff, you know, interviews, sharing information, um, putting content out there. I think, uh, you know, if there were more people doing this and, and there are, I think it's growing, it's changing, but I think putting out content and information is, is really the, the best way. So, mm -hmm. and I think going something that both of us have done and that I, I realized very early on going directly to the patient, direct to consumer, reaching out rather than for me for, for the first probably three or four years I practiced until I started doing anything online. I was always going in the traditional dental route where in order for me to get patients, I have to go talk to the dentists and the orthodontists and tell them about what I do. And then they refer to me. And, and that's the very traditional way to, to get, to get patients. And yeah. The old network to the patient directly and they can connect. I really think that that's how you get change. I came to, I came to that conclusion a few years ago, but now what I'm seeing is the more I can collaborate with the healthcare providers and change. Um, like I mentioned, I think before we started the call, the research that uh, the breathe Institute is putting out, um, getting involved with actually publishing research, um, getting into more uh, education for dentists. That's really where I'm focused now. And I think that's how you get the dental profession to grow. And, you know, so it's not just the patients, it's also the, it's the patients, but also the, the dental professions. And I, I think that will help a lot. So yeah. yeah. Are you getting more take up from dentists? Oh yeah. It's amazing. I, I have almost a dentist a day reach out to me and say, what is this? How do I learn more? Can you connect me with a therapist in my area? Um, yeah. It's a huge uptick within the past 18 months dentists are reaching out to me like crazy. I actually have three from the UK. Um, currently, uh, all kind of, well, they're taking my course and they are trying to learn this stuff. And uh, they're, they're all young and they're women and they're interested in helping their patients, so. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. I think, you know, a, a combined network yeah. and we're making a bigger difference. This is where I'm, I'm really focused, like the collaboration, the, the network, the professional network um, to, to build and, and grow. I think that's, that's a big deal. So, um, Listen, Sarah, I think that was great. You know, always great talking with you. Well, thank you for doing what you do. I mean, it's yeah. great. Yeah. And to, to shade to yourself as well, sir. So listen, um, now that I know you're in LA, I certainly will stop by next time I'm over. Please I don't know do. if I'm yes. going to go to LA ever again. I don't know if I'm ever going to leave the UK ever again. We are in a very interesting situation. However, the wonders of modern technology allows us to talk. <laughs> All right, listen, take care. All right. Have a good night. Right. Talk to you later. Bye.